as winter is settling in and Europe is facing an energy crisis, it is a good time to warm yourself with some heated arguments. Why did this happen? How could we have avoided it? Since Europe's trusty dictator in the East has stopped providing gas and oil, Europe needs to find alternatives post-haste. With the wisdom granted with hindsight, people tend to agree that we should have moved away from fossil energy in a quicker fashion. But what should have replaced these nasty polluting plants is the issue. Many people say that renewable energy production is the solution to this problem, and that has been the popular option. For example, Germany has invested heavily on renewable sources, mainly on wind and solar energy. Renewable energy sources are nice in a sense that they do not produce pollution as they turn electricity. According to some estimations, they are the cheapest form of energy production to build, although the cost comparison between energy production methods is extremely complicated, so a grain of salt is needed here. And since there is so much interest in renewable energy sources, they are going to get more efficient and reliable in the future. But of course, there are some negatives in renewable energy forms, like the space they require, waste from the old equipment, windmills acting as dead traps for flying creatures, and by far, the greatest trump card for those who oppose these energy forms. They do not give constant power. The sun doesn't shine all the time, Bye, bitch. and there are times when there is no wind. What makes this even more problematic is that in the northern parts of the world, where there is a tendency to be cold, in these cold days, renewable sources do jack shit. So I would say that the wind of change is not blowing strongly enough for us to fully rely on renewables, at least for the time being. Because increasing the amount of fossil fuel usage is not seen as an optimal solution because of climate change and all that, and renewable energy production is not stable enough to fully rely on, there seems to be one solution for this problem. Nuclear energy. With nuclear energy, you can boil water without emitting carbon to the atmosphere, and uranium can be split it even when there is no wind and it's cloudy. With these things in mind, nuclear energy seems to be a really good option to power our society. But the amount of nuclear power in the western world has gone down. The public image of nuclear energy was quite bad for a long time, and not without a reason. During the Cold War, there was quite a strong fear that the world would go out in a bang as the two superpowers would nuke the shit out of each other. So the whole nuclear thing had a bad reputation. Although a nuclear power plant can cause a nuclear explosion, and is statistically one of the safest forms of energy production. However, nuclear power has had its fair share of PR catastrophes, that were at the same time catastrophes. The latest one, Fukushima in 2011, spooked the world to close nuclear power plants. Germany, for example, pretty much immediately shut down half of its plants and is planning to retire the rest of the bunch. But if we look past these black swan events into the regular ones, the most obvious problem environmentalists have with nuclear power is the nuclear waste it produces. Now, it is true that nuclear waste is quite dangerous, as it remains radioactive for thousands of years and thus you can't leave it laying around. However, unlike with fossil fuels, you can actually control where the emissions go, and there are quite viable options to store nuclear waste, like the Onkalo in Finland. Since renewables are often criticized for their unreliable nature, because of nature, I think that it is fair to point out that nuclear energy is by no means a matter that is immune to the weather. The powerhouse of nuclear energy, France, is having problems with its nuclear power plants, because of the extreme temperatures that are heating the rivers which are used for the cooling of these plants. And because of the catastrophic nature of a nuclear meltdown, these plants cannot be used on full capacity. But in the grand scheme of things, this is nothing compared to the unreliability of renewable sources, and France's nuclear power plants are facing more critical challenges. So operating a nuclear power plant can cause a few issues, but before you can even worry about those, you need to actually build a nuclear power plant. The building process can be quite challenging, as we will see in a moment. In addition, the process is, understandably, heavily regulated, and the whole nuclear thing is usually a really dividing topic politically, meaning that even making the decision to build more nuclear power is challenging. So building nuclear power is easier said than done, and we can use Finland as our example. 
the early 2000s were a good time for nuclear energy in Finland, in a sense that there were a lot of plans for nuclear power production. But these plans were by no means unanimously decided, as for example, the Green Party got their knickers in such a twist when the construction of a nuclear power plant was decided that they left the cabinet. Twice. Nevertheless, in 2014, there were four operating nuclear power plants in Finland, one under construction and plans to build two more. Fast forward to the year 2023, and there are four operating power plants, one still under construction, and no plans to build more. So what went wrong? Let's start with the easiest one. Olkiluoto 4 was supposed to start operations in 2018, but since Olkiluoto 3 was starting to be a colossal clusterfuck, it was cancelled. Hanhikivi 1 was in the middle of getting a construction permit, and the construction of the plant was supposed to start in 2023. The plant was supposed to be built in cooperation with Russians, so it is pretty easy to see why these plants were aborted. And now we move to the big one. The construction of Olkiluoto 3 began in 2005, and it was planned to be complete in 2009. But the constructions didn't go as planned, and the first delay was announced in 2007. The new estimate for the completion of the plan was 2011. Delaying a construction project of this magnitude is expected and natural, but delaying it too many times is starting to feel like an overkill. There are multiple reasons for the delays, like unrealistic expectations, decrease in skilled labor, lack of experience in project management, and the sheer size and complexity of this project. The current estimation for when Olkiluoto 3 will start commercial production is March of 2023. If a project has been delayed 20 times, it surely hasn't been a good thing for the budget. Yep, Olkiluoto 3 is starting to be quite expensive. In fact, it is in the top 10 of most expensive buildings in the world. And speaking of this list, one would think that it would be an architectural rig measuring contest and the top end of the list would be filled with skyscrapers. But according to Wikipedia, in the top 10 there are 7 nuclear power plants. So if we want to build more nuclear power, with the current technology it will take some time and it might be quite costly. It is understandable that with nuclear power, you want to plan and construct carefully, avoiding mistakes. Because if things go horribly wrong, you might get a great HBO show, but not check on chances anytime soon. Olkiluoto 3 was fired up for the first time at the end of 2021, and things were looking good. Tests were performed throughout 2022, and Finns were anxious, because the capacity that Olkiluoto would provide for Finland was dialy needed because Finland isn't self-sustained when there is no wind energy. Since Olkiluoto 3 has taken its time, you could think that at least they had done things correctly. Well, this was not the case, as the latest delay was announced since cracks were found from each of the four water supply pumps. It is starting to look like fusion energy will be a thing before Olkiluoto 3 is finished. So in the end, nuclear energy is like every other energy production method. In a sense, that it is not a solution that would solve all of our energy problems instantly. But it has benefits that make it a really viable option to boil water. Naturally, this field has development happening all the time, fusion energy being the end goal. But before we have the power of the sun in the palm of our hands, there are other steps before it. For example, there is a great interest for small modular reactors that could solve many issues that larger reactors are facing, like the enormous effort that goes into constructing one. The public image of nuclear energy has gotten better, as the misconceptions regarding it have been addressed. So with political decisions and some effort, nuclear energy could be used to replace fossil energy, especially as renewables are facing their own problems. This way, uranium could be used to produce clean energy and not for speedrunning mass extinction. 